Hello, my name is Brandon Brown, and my project was determining the gene matrix in rabbits. Um, the project uh, overall summary was that I would take rabbits that I had, I wanted to get a specific color, and so I would selectively breed them to achieve that color, or plan to, at least. Um, we can determine the gene matrix of a rabbit just by looking at the rabbit itself, um, its pedigree, or the breed history. Uh, the rabbit itself is what it physically looks like, the patterns in which the colors are, maybe the eye color, um, just the size of the rabbit, anything specifically about that rabbit. Uh, the pedigree is anything that was in that rabbit's family history, what was known to be seen, what kind of traits, what kind of patterns are seen uh, in the family as a whole. And then breed history is like the pedigree on a mass scale and it's just whatever traits or patterns or anything about that type of rabbit found in the entire breed. A little background about genetics. Gregor Mendel was the founder of modern genetics. He bred peas uh, in different colors and realized that because of the specific variety that these peas were, different traits showed up in different batches when he cross, you know, bred them. They, sometimes they were wrinkly, sometimes they were different colors, they had different textures, uh, and he realized that living things, all different kinds of living things, animals and plants, have specific genetic codes that are not specifically shown. They have what's called recessive genes. That means that they have dominant genes which are shown and you can see, and recessive genes that are not seen but are still carried in the family. ARBA later did a uh, coat color genetics research, which means that they bred specific rabbits to achieve certain colors and again found the exact same thing that Mendel found out, was that these animals have di uh, dominant and recessive genes that were shown up inside the rabbit or uh, whatever animal and were not actually visible. So this, was a, this is a picture from a uh, genetics research that they were doing. It's specific code inside the DNA that says that it has the ability to be a brown color, but is in fact black because the black is more dominant. It, can be, it will be seen over brown. My specific uh, experiment was that I would take a black rabbit that I had and see that if I was able to breed from that a lilac rabbit and there are four different varieties in the Himalayan rabbits. It's black, blue, chocolate, and lilac. The two dominant colors are the black and the chocolate, and the dilutes of each of those dominant colors are blue for black and lilac for chocolate. Um, when you have a dilute of a dominant rabbit, if you have the dominant gene, that's the only thing will show up. The second bullet there is a specific code for a, 4H ra uh, for a uh, Himalayan rabbit. The capital B and the little uh, underscore under that uh, show that it's a, at least a black rabbit, which is what's visible in mine, and then it has some other gene that's unknown to me. Unless I do some kind of gene sequencing, I wouldn't know what specifically that is unless I started to breed them. The CH just means it's a Himalayan rabbit um, that, that's found on all of them. And then the capital D stands for it's a dense color. So that would mean that it's not the dilute. So if it's capital B and the capital D means that it's going to be a black. If it was a capital D and two lowercase d's, it can't have any sign of dense color. It would be the blue, which is the dilute of that. If it had two lowercase b's, that would make it a chocolate, and if it had two lowercase b's and two lowercase t's, that would be lilac. That's the hardest one to find because that requires every single gene that relates to color to be recessive, which means that no dominant gene can be found, uh, which takes a little bit of work trying to breed that. Um, I looked at my specific rabbit's pedigree to see that in its family, it does have a history of chocolate and lilac rabbits, which means that it has the ability, hopefully, to produce lilac rabbits uh, when bred with a certain color. I also looked at the breeding, I uh, practiced a breeding record with uh, certain different types of colors. I tried it with, um, I didn't have a lilac at the time, that's why I was trying to get one. So I tried it with chocolate and hopefully I found that I could find some 
dilute colors that work well with that. So I took the brown rabbit and then the black rabbit and then tried to breed them together and see if I can find a dilute gene for both of those. Uh, it's possible even though that this black rabbit has dominant genes in both colors that it can carry uh, dilute gene or recessive genes on each side. So that means it has the ability to produce a lilac rabbit. I found out that when after I was done breeding the rabbit I ended up with a dark black rabbit. And that was because both of them had black genes or dominant genes that were shown up that the chocolate rabbit carried. Uh, it wasn't specifically shown, but it was given to the offspring. And then it, I noticed that I had a lowercase d and a capital D in the rabbit, which still means that the rabbit would be black specifically because it doesn't have two lowercase d's. So because it doesn't have lowercase in the colors and then the dilutes, then that means that it's not going to be the specific rabbit that I was looking for. And then I have a, a lot of baby pictures for when they were all born. And the conclusion of that means that because I was doing this specifically for this color and I took my time to research about genetics, I was responsible with breeding. I didn't just pick two rabbits and hope that it works out. I specifically researched what would be needed to be done to produce this type of rabbit. I worked to better the community for ARBA. I just produced rabbits that I thought were going to be genetically healthy and were physically healthy. Um, they weren't ill just so I can produce these colors. So I didn't try to pick some rabbits that weren't healthy and uh, in any way just to try to fix those colors. Again, I specifically did research and produced only rabbits that I thought were acceptable. Uh, it's also very practical to do this. It's cheaper. It's you know, less intensive on feeding. You just have to specifically you know, breed a couple of litters maybe at the most instead of having to just try with every single one of your rabbits and hopefully you get one. Um, this way you can actually just breed a single litter and find your specific rabbit that you're looking for. Um, in conclusion, it's responsible, it's for the betterment of the 4-H community, and it's practical in the sense that it's easy to do and it doesn't take a lot of work just to study these things. Thank you.